Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheim. Today, we are continuing our discussion with Polish organizations that are supporting the displaced in Ukraine, a very important topic for us all in the world, with today's special guest, uh, Magdalena Parutrefla, President and CEO at the Foundation of Cultural Exchange here and there. And Magda, thank you so much for helping us uh, describe the work that you're doing and bringing that to the world. Thank you very much also for the invitation. Nice to meet you. So tell us a little bit about the work that you do. You have actually been on the front lines as the Ukrainian refugee crisis um, uh, began and it, you have continued to serve. Could you talk a, a little, describe the services and, and what you have experienced that um, encouraged you to knit together these services within the midst of a crisis? Uh, it all began because uh, we, where we are located is only 13 uh, kilometers from uh, Medica, which is a border crossing, and only 38 kilometers from Kortova, which is another border crossing. And we are an NGO, which is uh, by definition devoted to inclusion programs. So when the crisis started, we realized that this is impossible for us not to become involved in something uh, as huge and as uh, important. From the very beginning, uh, a lot of inhabitants uh, or local inhabitants became involved. The um, government agencies or local authority agencies, NGOs, volunteers, foreign volunteers. So Przemysl, because of its location, became uh, a kind of de facto uh, information and transportation center for refugees. Uh, basically, the refugees arriving in Przemysl were able to receive everything that they needed at that point. Main this was shelter, water, accommodation, clothing, medical help, um, coronavirus tests, and uh, of course, uh, well, some, somewhere to stay. So um, your mission actually uh, evolved. It was, it was the response of uh, taking what you were doing before and then evolving your mission to scale to the new need. Could you talk a little bit about the extent of your operations before this influx of refugees and the extent of the operation now and what you see is required in the future. At the beginning, uh, everybody uh, involved, we decided, uh, we, we decided that we will be involved as an organization as opposed to uh, become involved as individuals. Uh, uh, we, uh, we were, what we did is we sat down and started thinking how we could help. We started uh, on February the 26th, and uh, at the very beginning, the main assistance that was needed was to help interpreting, so linguistic help. We didn't know Ukrainian, but we knew Spanish. So our first uh, help was to provide help to students from Ecuador who were studying in Ukraine and they were fleeing Ukraine. And were, were you finding that you were able by um, helping students from Ecuador who were studying in Ukraine, who might have spoken Spanish and Ukrainian, and you speaking Polish and Spanish, did you find that, that there was a almost a triangular uh, support system that naturally evolved, or was that not a factor? We, we mainly provided our help and assistance in the Spanish language, but there were some cases where this sort of linguistic triangle took place. One interesting case, because the, the in addition to the students, uh, there were also uh, people who had families uh, in Ecuador that wanted to, to go there. Uh, we had one case where there was an, a, a gentleman who was eight, who was eight years old, and he uh, wanted to go to his daughter who stayed in Ecuador. So what, what we needed to help him leave Ukraine, and uh, we needed, as it were, to guide his steps remotely, which was done the following way. We talked to his daughter in Ecuador in Spanish. She talked to him, 
um, in Ukrainian. And uh, the whole thing lasted 24 hours. It took 24 hours for uh, for him being led that way, given indicators, directions, until he arrived in Poland. And it was a success because he did leave for Ecuador uh, on a humanitarian flight uh, on the last one that, that went there. So this was a way that you helped to get somebody out who was stuck in, in Ukraine to get somebody able to get first into Poland and then onto a humanitarian flight? Uh, so that was, yeah, that was just uh, an example of one of the many people who are stuck and wanted to get out. This was mm, interesting because that person did not speak Spanish. So what we had to do is we had to uh, contact with him via his daughter who was in Ecuador. But the remaining uh, cases were mostly the students from Ecuador. The way they evacuated was that they formed groups to travel more safely. And within those groups, they would go towards Poland. So let's talk a little bit about the scale of the services that you provide so that we have a comprehensive description of, 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 of your organization's mission and the services that you have. So uh, it all started with Ecuadorian students, and uh, that was the beginning. Uh, altogether, uh, if we add those who came directly from Ukraine, but also via Romania, Slovakia, and Hungary, there were 750 persons. Uh, the ones who came directly from Ukraine to Przemysl, that was out of this, 400 uh, came directly. Uh, so uh, the the local situation uh, had to be uh, what we were doing we we're providing locally the assistance for the situation we had some support from diplomats we had uh, a vice minister from uh, from uh, ecuador mr luis vias vadifeso present here uh, but what we were doing we were pro providing assistance with the local uh, situation and the local needs. We provided accommodation and transportation. Just to give you the idea of how difficult the situation was early in the beginning, because everything was full. Uh, there was no way you could find accommodation at any hostel, hotel, uh, dorm, anywhere. Uh, there were no cars to rent. Uh, so what we did, we used private contacts to arrange uh, for transport uh, to get people relocated very quickly. Our headquarters was in the girls' dorm at Chopin Street in Przemysl, and this is where it was all centered, and that's where the logistics were organized. So you you provide the these range of services primarily to people coming out of Ecuador. Um, have you also provided? Um, I have in my in my in my profile here uh, information about medical services. Is that correct as well? The thing is that I am myself suffering from diabetes type A, type type one. So uh, it got me thinking when when we, we realized that there were people in Ukraine who were sitting in shelters, who were uh, traveling in in uh, very uncomfortable conditions, how are they coping? If, what if there are people with diabetes there? Uh, and we decided that uh, we could, we should really. Uh, be able to respond to this sort of uh, uh, need, uh, not just type type one, also type two. Um, so uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, foundations we got in touch with, uh, and this is where we will show you the scale of operations, is uh, uh, the the foundation called Insulin for Life, the Netherlands. The it's a organization of Jasper Eking and. Uh, uh, this they provided uh, uh, they are going to to have a, a meeting which is going to be called a vcap it's going to be type 1 diabetes sufferers this is going to be in uh, august this year this uh, the the amount of uh, uh, support they provided is uh, um, two shipments of insulin and specifically there were 2,836 milliliters. So there were 945 vials of three milliliter each. Uh, that, that, that was 5,310 needles. So I, was, uh, uh, I, I did the exercise of checking how much was that worth. 
And the US price for one of those uh, insulin types, which was Cumalog, was 100 US dollars for three milliliter vial, which means that what they sent us was worth 94,500 US dollars. We received almost the same amount from uh, uh, through a different channel. It was a German, a German uh, volunteers, a grassroots movement, uh, who were sending us uh, insulin in a more dispersed way. Uh, but they sent pretty much the same amount. So in addition to that, we, we received uh, um, uh, 100 uh, glucometers from Jasper Eking and, and two boxes of, of test strips. Uh, Ms. Kamila Kaminska-Stark, who is a PhD from Wrocław University, sent us 50 boxes of medical supplies. Are there any other other um, things that we should be conveying to our audience about the work that you're doing um, and the intention that you have to continue to serve? Well, our help really started with the helping in interpretation. Then we went through providing some form of psychological support because we are staying with those people providing moral support. And then uh, we started providing help that was uh, dictated by who we were, by what situations we were in. In this case, it was just my condition that uh, decided about that. But then we started uh, expanding in a very simple way. We started listening listening to our, what our partners in Ukraine were saying. Uh, basically, uh, we, we, uh, we ask them what they want. We, before Christmas, we asked them what they wanted. They told us what they really wanted was food, food uh, uh, aid, where we sent parcels with food. So uh, we, we now contacted all our Ukrainian partners. And one of the uh, first things that they all came up with was medical supplies for the military. Uh, so uh, talking about bureaucracy, there is a place for bureaucracy because in a way, for some bureaucracy, it provides a level of transparency. Uh, the first thing we do is we first call them and ask them, what do you want? And then we provide help. And the second thing is with every shipment that we sent over, we have paperwork. We just have simple record of what was sent, where was sent, and just a protocol of, of shipment. And so you're you're basically shaping your organization around human need. Uh, what was the the, uh, the the most important these yes these are these are the really human need this is the most important value our basic idea is that we should not be sending things that are not needed uh, but it, just in order to to help everyone uh, get the better idea of what sort of things may be needed uh, I'll just continue with the list. What we need, for instance, is, is food and means of hygiene. There's just one uh, UK-based organization uh, told us that they have uh, in their care 400 people who need food. So uh, uh, there are also uh, such things as clothing and shoes. We have to remember that there are a lot of people who are displaced inside Ukraine. They left home in winter. Now it's summertime. They don't have any clothes to wear. They don't have any summer clothes. So that is, is needed. There is medical supplies. There is an urgent need, for instance, for defibrillators. Uh, another, another thing is um, there's a need for um, technical support for organizations and NGOs, uh, sometimes very basic things that we take for granted. Uh, everyone who's operating inside Ukraine uh, will probably appreciate a printer, a scanner, and a PC. Uh, next, there is a uh, uh, the, the thing that we're organizing, the, the decamp for, for uh, diabetic patients, we would like to be able to get together people who have come uh, to Poland from Ukraine, but also get some people who are still in Ukraine to attend. And this is something that was so far um, funded by Norway grants, uh, but uh, uh, that's, that money was, was used up. And if we were to get that organized, we will need some uh, translators, uh, interpreters. We would need some medical personnel uh, who are able to communicate in, in Ukrainian. Uh, so yeah, this is, this, these, are, these are the sort of needs that we're talking about. So you are uh, essentially functioning as a way to um, identify supply and identify need and creating the link between the supply of a particular good or service and the need that people have. 
And as needs evolve, your, your operation evolves, the specifics, whether it's insulin or a computer or clothing or food, but the, but the actual service that you're providing is to, is to create that connection between supply and need. Basically, at the core of our activity is anything related to persons with diabetes. And so we mainly build anything that we do around that and uh, we're finding ways of uh, providing that sort of help at the time of crisis. The other things that we do, food and clothing, uh, because we believe that these are basic human needs and everybody should have the right to have access to food and clothing, because there is such a need, we do that. You, you you respond to the ancillary needs as you're also providing your primary uh, service. Uh, that, that, that is true. We, we, uh, re we, we react to the needs that are absolutely essential. At the same time, remembering that the, our key uh, activity is related to persons with, diabetics, uh, with diabetes, and we would like uh, to be able to offer these range of services also to persons coming from Ukraine. It's so fascinating because you are not necessarily a medical organization, yet you saw a need you had a capability, you had a personal connection, and you brought that all together to create a program. Um, so the, the situation arose in a very straightforward way. I was uh, uh, looking at what was happening in Przemysl, at the huge numbers of people who came to Przemysl to help. And I just started thinking, what could I do? What could I do best? I thought about my uh, condition, the fact that I have diabetes, and I decided that I was actually in a pretty good position to help other people who are suffering from diabetes. Magdalena Paro Treftla, thank you so much uh, for your work as President and CEO of the Foundation of Cultural Exchange here and there. Thank, thank your people, uh, thank your volunteers, thank your donors. What you're doing is so important to all, uh, us all and certainly to the people who are displaced in Ukraine, these services are so essential and they are life-saving. So we, we very much appreciate your engagement um, and, and you represent the best of us. Uh, so we very much appreciate and recognize your work. Thank you very much. And uh, it's really nice to, to have someone who, who takes care of uh, also of uh, us taking care and who want to help because your, your help is great. And uh, we hope that we can help more people with your help also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, have a great day and, and stay safe in your work. Thank you.